All right, so there's this guy named Dex, and uh, we all have personal history with him. Um, basically, I think it was you were the first one. First one. So yeah. you can go ahead and like kind of tell your first experience with him. Um, originally, I bought a verse off him. It was all cool. He told me the price. I paid the price, and then he half-assed the verse, completely ripped me off, and then ended with a controversial bar that I couldn't market at all. So then, when Crypt was talking about getting a verse. Yeah, he actually warned me not yeah. to do it because of the controversy that was going on and like how he kind of half-assed his verse. And um, the money that he told me was the verse cost was about four to five times as much as he charged him. And I straight up told him, I don't have the money for that. Good luck with your future, though. Keep killing it. Do your thing. And then he came back, well, what's your budget? I'll make it work. And so we agreed on a price. And um, he gave me a verse. And it was, it was lackluster. I mean, it wasn't exactly half-assed, but it definitely was not his best. I had heard his best. Um, and so I put out a song, and he was actually on the song with me as well. And um, But when he gave me this verse, it was just me and him. And I heard how short his verse was and how like kind of lackluster it was. And I asked him to be on a song, on the same song, and asked another popular guy to be on the song with us. And then uh, once Dax heard their verses, he changed his. And in his new verse, he dissed all of us subliminally. Well, that wasn't even subliminal. Yeah, it was subliminal. Yeah. <laughs> and then uh, he definitely, that's where the beef came in with him. Yeah, and then, uh, so... He dissed us all on the song, and I heard the song, because um, I hadn't heard the final version, because I had gotten a solo song with him too, after Crypt did, after we did the song together. And I had just like came back from doing that, and he was acting all cool, but then when I heard the verse, Crypt had sent me back the new verse, where he was dissing us in it, I just, I like lost my mind on that. And so we were just like trying to figure out what to do, so we just kind of decided to just like keep it under wraps for a while. And then that's when Dwayne came. He's the one in. that broke the story. He's the one that basically broke the whole ice because he uh, made the Dax Exposed video, which was everything that had happened. And yeah, you can, you can talk about it. Yeah. yeah, I just I was doing reactions to his music videos. I liked that he was positive, but I started to notice that his his solo videos were way better than anything that he was selling people. And so I just actually DM'd both of them. They were. I think I had like 900 subscribers. Mm -hmm. And they responded to me like the same day and were like, yeah, this is my experience with him, this is what he did to me. And so I took that information and got some more information and I just made a video and just put it out there to see if people would would watch it. And it, it went pretty crazy and everything kind of just got started from there. And, that, and that's the main stuff, of course, there's a lot of smaller things. I mean, he the song that we did together, he was texting me, telling me the song was legendary, fire, he loved the song. And then whenever it dropped, he didn't promote it whatsoever. I mean, I didn't ask him to, but, you know, it's a common courtesy thing to kind of promote a song that you're on. Um, but he didn't promote it, and fans were messaging him left and right, why aren't you promoting the song? And he was telling them the song was shit, and that we were disrespecting him and just pretty much talking shit behind our backs. And then uh, so you actually paid him. Yeah, to and it's song. crazy because after we did that... <coughs> um, voice cracked, nice. Yeah, my voice cracked. <laughs> after we did that, uh, I asked him... Uh, to do a song like we were gonna do a song together but I've like kind of been coming up from the underground industry so I know how it kind of works uh, like outside of YouTube sometimes like where people will major artists will if you do like a feature with them and you don't explicitly tell them like hey are you gonna promote this then they just pretend like they're not gonna promote it so I asked him like hey will you promote this song and he goes if you this is after I already paid like 3,000 for a verse or and then he says hey if you shoot a video then I'll promote it because he didn't promote the audio so then I I bought tickets to LA because that's where he is I flew me and my people out hotels whatever and we shoot the video and he just doesn't promote it he just refuses to promote it for some reason so then that's when that was my biggest issue on, on top of everything else and also the I don't know much about the little peep thing do you know I mean I don't know like the intricate details. I just know there was something about a kid had, I think a kid bought a verse from Little Peep and then he, Dax was supposed to be on the song, but Dax had recently moved to LA or something like that. And he told the kid, hey, like my producer is gonna get it all finished. And he said, I just need you to send the stems, like the beat, the, the vocals, all that kind of stuff. And the kid was like, well, if I send all this to you, how do I know that you're not just gonna take it and use it? Cause I have nothing to hold you know, that against you or whatever. And he's like, no, don't worry, I got it. At least that was the text message that I seen. And then the kid sent it to him and he just went and took it, put it out as his own song. And, yeah. And it was after Lil Peep died, too. Yeah. And it was yeah. trying to get more exposure like on his name. Yeah. And, yeah, it was just some shitty stuff. And, you know, he's just done a lot of really scummy shit to everybody. <laughs> no, he's in I mean, this is Yeah, this is just four people. <laughs> There's uh, two other guys, Hi-Rez and Grizzy Hendrix, who have very similar experiences. He tried to charge Hi-Rez $8,000 for a verse after he offered to pay lawyer fees to get him out of his contract with his manager. 
and just after he was a real dude to him, offered him a place to stay. Offered him a place to stay. Food. Bought his food. Devon Terrell paid for his meal. Yeah. Um, they shot a video together, and Dax ghosted him after the video was shot. And he's just, it's a common thing of him just completely fuck over these new artists and people that work with him. And so we just kind of had enough of it. Yeah. And then I think did Bad Habits come out first? Oh yeah, Bad Habits. So um, oh, yeah. Um, my grandmother died uh, like a day or two after Four Horsemen came out, which was the song that I did with Dax and him. And obviously he didn't promote it or anything like that. And uh, this is around this time I'm getting. Um, just all this word that he's talking shit behind her back and everything. He never says anything to me about my grandmother passing away and praying for the family or anything like that. Um, and then I drop a song called Bad Habit, which is my favorite song I've ever done. Uh, and there's subliminal shots at him. It's not a diss towards him like at all. I mean, it's just, it's a normal song. But he commented on that video, and this is two weeks after the funeral, saying, I'm praying for you and your family. I hope everything is cool. And it just, it just shows that he was trying to get in the public eye that he's in good terms with me instead of talking to me directly about my family, my grandmother, and stuff like that. Like, he had his number and everything. He yeah, just... I mean, we had talked many times previously on the phone, text, all this stuff. And, yeah. and then after he did Bad Habits, um, after Dwayne dropped the Exposed video, I finally was just like, all right, well, I'm about to just do my song, and then that's what I did, I'm Not Dax. And after that, I, that's kind of like when everything, because Crips was like the first shot, like semi shots, but it was more subliminal. Mine was the first one where just like an open, yeah. this is for Dax. And then um, it kind of went crazy after that. And then now, which is weird because that was like, what, five months later? Yeah, I mean, ago? all this happened four or five months ago. He just randomly brought it up again. Yeah, then he randomly and made a song. And saying he was going to lyrically ejaculate all of us. <laughs> he made a song <laughs> and he words. dissed all of us in it. Uh, well, dissed all of us in it. He just dropped it like a week ago. So I dropped the track, he dropped the track, he dropped the track, and now this is his track. Now I'm the last one that hasn't said anything. Yeah. So we're gonna end it off at, at a... Yeah, so it makes sense to bring us all into it. Yeah. Right. And that's why I, we flew these guys out here, is yeah. so we could kind of put it all to rest. So talk about the, the video. What's the, what's the concept? I, we're in a funeral home yeah. with, I mean, the, with the body behind us. <laughs> yeah, we got old Dicey Pad back there in the coffin. <laughs> um, so pretty much it's it's called, the song is called Eulogy. Get and crazy props. Yeah, and Grizzly Brown, shout out Grizzly Hendrix. Um, but the song is called Eulogy, and obviously Eulogy is a speech given at a funeral. Most of the time it's positive. This is obviously not positive. It's just kind of expressing all the shitty things he did to us and some short little jabs to let him know. It's like, hey, we know a lot about you. Just kind of back off a little bit. And it's basically just putting an end to it. Like, we're done with you. This is the last we're ever going to talk about you. Enjoy it. So. It's got like a, it's got like a, I think more of a comedic twist than it could, probably would come off right now just seeing the scenery. <laughs> yeah. But it's yeah, yeah I mean, this if is. You this get is up here and look at some of the stuff. He used to be a janitor. I don't know if anybody knew that. Uh, <laughs> that's like a very common thing he has in multiple songs. That's one of the things he harped on. Is he reuses yeah. a lot of lines in several different songs. And uh, being a janitor is a very well known topic that he likes to discuss. So back here we have some lovely funeral arrangements with a plunger in one of them and a toilet brush in another one. And a, like a little dustpan broom, and uh, he had a job by Tory Lanez, and uh, that's back there. There's a picture of his ex-girlfriend back there that he <laughs> cheated on, but she also cheated on him. But then there's fake stories involved. He's just a shitty dude. So. so did you guys know each other, or when did you, when did your paths cross? Did you did you meet basically after the disc record started between, I, well, or did you know say, each other before that? I met him a little before that. Like we had been talking yeah, back and forth just like I met him during the Eminem MGK stuff. Yeah, when Eminem and MGK started beefing and then I reacted to his stuff and then we started talking. I met him after the exposed video. Like I, I think he had messaged me before that, but I didn't really know who he was until then and then we got cool after that because Dax striked his channel for putting the exposed video, which is a no no on YouTube. So I just after that I felt bad because I felt like he put his neck out and then got but he got his stuff yeah. back he got it yeah. overturned so yeah. it was uh that's and then i this is my first time meeting i talked to him we knew each other from the cypher yeah from the yeah. cypher that's yeah. the first yeah. time i'm actually yeah. meeting yeah. right now but but like talking like being close like yeah. i think we were just going to collab on a song yeah. yeah that's what we were doing yeah so it all kind of came together yeah. well me and them and me and him and each other before that what, what's been the fans reaction uh they're <laughs> overwhelming support for us uh they kind what of, about they his see, fans? His fans are brainwashed. Uh, it's, it's very cult-like following. 
Uh, you made the Jonestown reference where they're drinking Kool-Aid pretty much. <laughs> yeah. Dax is considered Jim Jones. I mean, it's just, it's re- it's crazy stuff. Don't believe anything he says. Yeah, and he speaks in third person. I mean, he, he acts, it's like, I don't even know what's going on. He said borderline schizophrenia or something. Yeah, it's starting right. to get to his head, though. You can see he's getting, it's yeah. it's all loading onto his head. Yeah. yeah, I mean, I put out a tweet today, just a picture of, like, the art cover to this, and, like, people are just going nuts. I mean, just everybody's excited. And people, people don't even know where They don't know about them. Like, they know. I'm, they know yeah. They've been be hitting me up for weeks, begging me to diss them, mm-hmm. and then I finally put it out, and then people are just going nuts, and they have no idea these guys are here. Yeah. And it'll be even crazier tomorrow whenever I announce that they're here. I'm okay. excited for that picture. Yeah. 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 <laughs> Wow. So so is this a, you know, in hip hop, we have a lot of things that are fake beef, meaning that people do things basically for publicity, exposure, et cetera. Um, where is this in that? This is like 100% I do not like the man. I, I, mean, swing. I think he does it for the other reasons. Yeah, yeah. It's, us. it's fake beef to him, I guess. Uh, it's getting into his stuff. We legitimately do not like him as a person. Uh, I don't like any of his actions. Like, it's just he's not a good person. I mean, I don't want to say he's not a good person. I'm I'll sure just, he's got some good in him, but he's he's not showing that to me. I'll just say that with me, uh, I think people know that I'm serious. <laughs> I mean, that's I mean. Show to a show. Yeah, but yeah. So yeah, I'm yeah. serious. I just leave it there. <laughs> <laughs> so is is this the? You know, I'm old school. Uh, Beasts would have been around in hip hop almost since the beginning. Mm-hmm. Uh, is this is this kind of an extension of kind of the battle rap scene as a as a back and forth type of thing, or you know, is this is this something where you're doing to express yourself and let the fans know how you feel about the situation? More so the second one. I mean, we yeah. we all like battle rap and stuff, but I mean, we're not. I'm gonna respond back if he responds and back. I, and I feel like, like it's that. it's more personal than yeah. like bar pressing at this point. Yeah. yeah. So like with battle rap, I feel like it's more punchlines and more trying to see who's the better artist. But at this point, it's just trying to arrow what he's done, his dirty yeah. deeds, and and show people he's not the dude he says he is. Exactly. Wow. It's yeah. not. It's not. Yeah. Bad. So it's more it's personal. Just, uh, yeah. Real, just saying stuff. We're not on the tracks. I don't think any of us are just trying to show how good we rap because we all know we rap better than him. But it's <laughs> nothing to prove. Yeah, but it's more like all of our punches come from real life things that have actually happened. So. Yeah. That's kind of what Whack Ass Rappers was, was him trying to show us that he can rap like we can. Yeah, yeah that's true. That yeah, really I mean, he, it was like he was trying to impress us, and we all just, like, we, I mean, we drove back from the airport in Nashville last night and literally just deconstructed every single horrible thing with this song for two hours and went home. <laughs> and, I mean, just, yeah, yeah it's, he's a joke. What, what do you expect the response to be? I mean, their response has been great. They've already all dropped their tracks and yeah. stuff, so... Uh, I mean, this the production on this is a little bit higher because we, obviously we're in a funeral home, yeah. and yeah. Uh, just the whole like style behind the video is a little bit different. He's being modest. Uh, His video is gonna be big. It's gonna be, <laughs> uh, it's gonna be huge. It's gonna have the biggest movie. impact probably of anybody who's yeah. dropped it because of the anticipation of it. Like this is a monumental moment simply because you don't see this stuff. The last time, like, this will be the first time me and Crypt have ever been in person on camera too. And the last time we did a track, we like send each other video and stuff so yeah. it's it's gonna be a real big deal like me and Dwayne are probably like this like of the smallest but these two guys are really big so when it comes to them or everybody together then it's gonna be a, it's gonna be huge it's gonna be huge wow 